millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Ever have one of those late night online shopping sprees that you just knew you'd regret in the morning? Listen to this. Our inner state of mind is so instrumental in shaping what we do and how we do it that if we don't manage our own mind and emotions in a healthy way, it's almost impossible to make healthy choices. These are powerful words by our guest, Dr. Cortland Dahl. Keep listening to find out how you can train your mind to step into financial well-being. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Compton Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Today is World Meditation Day. Now, before you go on a hunt for crystals and candles, I want to tell you that meditation isn't about sitting on a cushion in a dark room. Think about this though, meditation is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Think of it like mental training. Meditation helps activate this area of your brain that controls self-regulation. This helps with impulse control. Hello, those late night shopping sprees, staying focused, and so much more. And meditation for me has been a game changer over the last few years. I notice changes in my body, my mind, behavior, patterns, things that I have never been able to develop before. So what does this all have to do with money? Good question. Dr. Cortland Dahl, or Court, is the Chief Contemplative Officer at Healthy Minds Innovation and a research scientist at the Center for Healthy Minds. He's also the creator and voice of the free app Healthy Minds Program. He's pretty smart, and he's got a lot to say in this episode about the power of your mind, the benefits of meditation, and how meditation can help you redefine your definition of happiness and success when it comes to money. If you're someone who has been stuck in this equation of what life should be minus what life actually is equals how much your life might suck at a given moment... Court has some amazing words of wisdom that will transform your life and your money in this episode. Let's jump in. We're talking about meditation, uh, a subject that 
probably a few years ago. I certainly wouldn't touch on this show, but I have been meditating myself for about two years now, and it it really has been life-changing for me. And so I know particularly about areas in my life where maybe I've had anxiety, particularly money is one of those areas. Meditation has really helped me have some sort of peace and um you know, maybe relax a little bit of my anxiety. And I know people come to meditation all all different ways and, and you're really the expert. So I'd love to just start out if you could share a little bit about like the benefits of meditation. Why why should someone even consider meditation? That's a great question. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions about even the word meditation. I think one simple way to understand meditation is that meditation is really to the mind what exercise is to the body. It's really mm. just training the mind. Uh, and like there are many forms of exercise, they all do different things. They all boost your health and strengthen the immune system, but they do it in different ways. There are many different kinds of meditation. So they have different benefits. They do different things. They even activate different brain networks. So the research we do at the Center for Healthy Minds at UW-Madison, which is where I work, uh, we've looked at a number of different kinds of meditation, and, and we actually see that they they really activate different parts of the brain. But wow. it, to sum up a lot of the research, just to say one very simple thing about the benefits, I would say that really the key benefit is that all these various forms of meditation in one way, shape, or form are really helping us strengthen the capacity for self-regulation. Uh, we just mm-hmm. aren't better able to manage our thoughts and emotions and impulses. Yeah, I, I, tell me a little bit about that, like the idea of of self regulation, because I think a lot of people will be like, "Oh yeah, well, I, I mean, isn't that what I do every day anyway?" But I think there's like a deeper um, neuroscience that's happening in our brains when we when we do things like like meditate. I'd love to hear from you, like what's actually happening. Yeah, that's a great question. So for those of you who have meditated, and you yourself probably have experienced this, the first thing you realize is that we have a lot less control over our own (laughs) mental state than we like to think we do. Even something very simple, you know, probably the most common form of meditation is to uh, bring awareness to the breath. So you just sit down and you pay attention to your breath. It sounds like the simplest thing in the world. You know, it sounds like anybody should be able to do it. But if you actually try to do it, it's really hard. Yes. Uh, not it's not easy. It's surprisingly difficult. And that's a simple form of meditation. There are ones that are much more complex than that. So, you know, the when you try to train your mind, um, you know, again to use the, the the exercise analogy, it's it's like imagine you've never worked out a day in your life and you suddenly go to the gym. And you might have thought you were in good shape before you hit the treadmill for the first time, but you realize pretty quick there's a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> and maybe so, a lot of pain yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of yeah, a lot of yeah, it's a pretty steep learning curve. It's very humbling. But really, you know, what meditation is doing, you know, with the caveat that there's many forms of meditation, really to do any form of mental training, which is what meditation is, you need to activate uh, a network in the brain called the central executive network. This is the network that allows for self-regulation. So if you want the capacity to notice an unhealthy impulse before you blindly follow it, you need to be able to activate that network. If you want Mm -hmm. to be able to stay focused at work or to simply be a good listener with a friend, you need to be able to activate this network. So really, you're just strengthening this network in the brain and this capacity that we all have, but that is kind of underdeveloped most of the time to really be in the driver's seat of your own mind. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So I'm also thinking about, like, particularly when we talk about money, I'm a big advocate of talking about the the mind piece, the mindset piece, because I really think it's probably like 80% of how we create change is, is in the mind and 20%, maybe even less is the actual like technique uh, around money, like tools, tips, those sorts of things. So uh, how powerful is the mind when it comes to things like that, when it comes to decision making or, uh, you know, forming habits and things like that? Yeah, I think what you what you mentioned is is right on the money. It, you know, the mind, our mental state, our emotional state is is really everything, even for something that might be seemingly about our, our behavior in the world. 
uh, making choices about money or about our health or any of these things, our inner state of mind is so uh, instrumental in shaping what we do and how we do it that if we don't uh, manage our own mind and emotions uh, in a healthy way, it's almost impossible to make healthy choices. Again, you know, in this mm. case with our financial health. So, I mean, I think most of us know this from our personal experience when we oftentimes make the worst choices uh, and do things that might even be destructive at times, it's driven by our emotions. You know, we might be having a really hard day and we go out and just buy something that we don't need, or we eat too much or whatever our coping behaviors might be. So really, even if we're thinking about things like our financial health um, and making good decisions, we really uh, need to focus on our mental state. And the science really backs that up. It's really critical to decision making uh, and a whole range of kind of healthy behaviors. Yeah. So kind of putting putting those puzzle pieces together, when we think about meditation, how could meditation help us in whether it's money or relationships or career or maybe any of our area of our life that we really want to better, how could meditation practically provide some benefits? Yeah, there's a few ways that I think it could um, make a huge difference. Um, the first is simply that when we learn to train our mind in this way, as we do with meditation, you really start to to tap into a source of well-being that is not so tied to external circumstances. So we mm. start equating our own happiness or success less with what we have or success in an outer sense. And we just start feeling more comfortable with ourselves. We feel more comfortable in our own skin. We might just feel a little bit more content. And so we're we're, we're just a little less needy, you could say. We don't have, um, you know, um, looking to the world to fill us up, so to speak. Um, so I think it just gives us a sense of contentment that often eludes us uh, in everyday life and that can prompt all sorts of behaviors, you know, which right. oftentimes do influence, you know, our, our financial habits and so on. Um, and then the other piece of this uh, that's related but a little bit different is just straight up impulse control. <laughs> um, you know, just the ability to notice an impulse to see the, you know, the drive in a moment, the, the impulse to do something, to buy something, to make some decision, and to be able to step back and notice it before we're immediately thrown into the, the behavior is just a, a critically important skill to have. Um, so there's a whole range of, of benefits, but I'd say, you know, when it comes to our, to, to money and financial health, I would say those are some of the really the, the key, uh, yeah. key piece, pieces to have in place. I think that's so, uh, it's just so fascinating to me because it, it feels like w when we talk about it, it feels like things that should just be, well, yeah, of course we do that. Like, of course we don't lean into the impulses or of course we have a healthy mind around certain things, but the actual like practicality of it <laughs> is usually not the case. And I, j I just think it's so, it's so fascinating when we're when we're talking about the mind, it's like we've been in our bodies for however long we've been alive. We should be able to do these things maybe a little bit better. And yet I find as I go through more life, like this actually gets more complicated. It's not, yeah, these things are not easy. You know, we start with little kids, something as simple as uh, you know, being able to pay attention, you know, parents and teachers tell their kids all the time, just pay attention. Why aren't you staying focused as though we just flip a switch and we do it. But not only, you know, is that difficult, generally speaking, and probably has been throughout human history, but we have a whole economy that is now built on manipulating our attention our, and our emotions. Yeah. So it was never easy, but now the world is, is basically a setup to control our impulses and our thoughts and our emotions and our attention. So this stuff was always challenging, but now it's it's just absolutely critical for our well-being to be able to to take back the reins of our own inner experience. Because there are people, some of the brightest people in the world are being paid to to, you know, to try to have you to trigger the right emotions at the right time. Seriously. I mean it's it just, you know, everything feels like clickbait these days. And uh you're you're so right. So I mean, obviously, meditation is is one of those tools to kind of take back the reins. But are, are there any other tips about how we could 
how we could do that, like more things that we could do? Well, you know, with meditation, it can sound really intimidating to people. Um, I think another thing, another misconception um, is that, you know, you need to, you need to have a, you know, close the shades, put on some candles and incense and have, you know, a couple hours and a warm bath or something to, you know, get everything just right. But meditation is actually something you can do anytime and anywhere. It literally could be, you know, if you're walking from one meeting to another in a busy day and you bring some intentionality to what's happening in your own mind. So maybe it's, again, you just bring your awareness to uh, the movement of your breath. You take a few calming breaths and and take a moment to reboot. Or it could be a different form of meditation. You could go back to something around your values and a sense of purpose. Why am I why am I even doing this work? What's mm. really meaningful and valuable here? And then go into that next meeting, having you know reconnected with what's truly important to you. So again, it could just be a moment. And when you add these moments up, essentially what we're doing is we're activating brain states for a few moments at a time. But over time, those brain states eventually turn into enduring traits. If you do them enough, it becomes your new baseline. So again, this could be really simple. Sitting meditation, you know, taking time out of your day can help. It can be really powerful, but that's not the only way to do it. There's many ways to meditate, uh, even in a very busy life. So there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way, right? We don't have to sit still necessarily or lay down or like you say, you know, light candles and take a warm bath. Like there isn't a right or wrong way. There, there really isn't, you know, and you see all these images, you know, you see some, somebody meditating on a magazine cover and it looks like they're all blissed out and peaceful. <laughs> and then people meditate and they realize, wow, I can't even focus my breath for 30 <laughs> seconds without right? my mind wandering all over the place. And you think I'm just not cut out for this. I mean, I can't count how many times people have said, I, you know, I tried to meditate and I was just too distracted. So I stopped. And that's like saying, you know, I was going to work out, but I tried and I got tired. You know, that right. the, the whole point is the mind is untrained. So it's completely normal. But as you said, um, there are, there's really no wrong way to do it. There's many ways to meditate. Um, and it's just, you know, looking around and finding a way that resonates and knowing that it just takes time, a little time, a little patience, a little self-compassion, but the, the changes could be profound if you stick with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I could put an exclamation mark on that sentence for me personally. Uh, and, and it feels like everywhere we look, people are talking about mindfulness and meditation. There's a lot of great apps that are out there. What do you think is stirring the pot again in, in, a, in a really good way, but to have all of these conversations about mental health and mindfulness and and meditation? Well, I think certainly part of it has got to be that individually and collectively as a society, we just need help. You know, there, there has been an emerging mental health crisis, even before the pandemic, um, mm -hmm. levels of anxiety, levels of depression, levels of attention related disorders were really, you know, at epidemic levels. And as a result of the pandemic, they've even just gone through the roof. So we, although externally, um, have developed economically, certainly technology, in terms of our inner well-being and our mental health, uh, it's really been in steady decline. And we all feel that, you know, I think yeah. we all feel how pulled into our devices we are all the time, how difficult it is to stay distracted, to stay focused and to not be distracted. And so I think we just feel this viscerally, you know, we can feel it in our lives and we see the effects and people are just looking uh, for help. So I think it's that. And I think there's also um, a, a a lot of growing scientific research that helps people see that this doesn't have to be some new agey woo woo thing. Like you can be anybody, you can be an atheist, you can be Christian, you can be Buddhist, you can be whatever you want. And anybody can really benefit from this. It's not, doesn't have to be a religious or spiritual thing. It's really just a way to care for the mind and to care for the brain. Mm, I like that to care for the mind and the brain. Uh, curious, like when, when did your love for meditating start? Have you been a, a long time meditator? Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news 
Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to Nerd Wallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before Nerd Wallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. <laughs> I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hi, this is Elton John here. Throughout my U.S. tour last year, we heard from thousands of fans that financial security and financial planning are hugely important to them. So important that David and I are continuing this vital conversation into 2023. Together with the Alliance for Lifetime Income, I'm spreading the word about the importance of protected income, which is money you're guaranteed to get. Like me, I'm sure you have big plans for your next chapter. Protected income from an annuity helps ensure you have all your bases covered so you can have the financial freedom to tick off your bucket list. The first step is to decide what's on your bucket list. Then meet with your financial advisor to ask if you have protected income and get their help making a plan that fits your unique financial goals. Join me and my friends at the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Together, we can help make financial freedom in retirement a reality for more Americans, starting with you. Go to protectedincome.org today. Yeah, I've, I've really meditated my entire adult life. Um, you know, I started almost uh, close to 30 years ago now. I was with just starting university. For me, what really prompted me to, to begin meditating was anxiety. I had, yeah. had been, you know, an anxious, restless kid. And I got to college and I was just, overwhelmed. And in particular, the social stuff for me was really challenging, going into parties and making friends, not knowing anybody. Um, I had a phobia of public speaking. I would completely lose it even at the idea of having to give a presentation (laughs) in class. And it just got really bad. The anxiety got really intense. And that that is what prompted me uh, for my own, you know, personal journey to, uh, to learn to meditate. Um, but then I got interested in scientifically, you know, and have studied meditation as a scientist. And um, but it's always been driven by uh, that personal interest, and um, you know, just wanting to understand how how it works. I had seen it work for me, but really just wanting to understand yeah, what's yeah. going on in the the body, the mind, the brain when we do these practices. 
So yeah, I, from from like a science standpoint, when we meditate, like if you're looking at somebody's brain, like are you seeing these different sectors of the brain either turn on or turn off? Yeah, you know, the way neuroscience works, I mean, there's different ways to measure brain activity. A lot of the work that we do at the Center for Healthy Minds is what we call brain imaging. So like a, an fMRI, putting people in a scanner. Um, and typically, it, it takes a lot of very complex um, statistical analysis to, to see the sort of the signals that emerge from that. So typically, you you study groups of people and you you see the patterns that emerge across those groups of people. But there have been times when um, in our research, and uh, Dr. Richard Davidson, who's the founder of our center in particular, who's one of the, the pioneers in this field, where they've done um, research and actually seen visibly to the naked eye changes in brain activity that usually you only detect you know, after analyzing a lot of data. Mm. Um, and that, was, that work in particular was with very advanced meditators and some very unique patterns of brain activity that had never been documented uh, before. So I think that's another really cool thing about this area of research is that it shows the promise of these practices in, in really deeply transforming not only how the mind works, but even how the brain operates. And that there are you know, levels of brain activity and mental states that, that really are far beyond what we normally think of as possible. Right. Yeah, we it's it's like we live in our bodies and it's hard to believe sometimes that the brain is as complex as it is and yet sometimes you think like I have this negative or not even negative you could just be I have this thought pattern that just keeps coming up over and over again like why is this happening? Why can't I control this? And then when you step back and think about just the science of how we're made, it's it's no wonder that it's all very complex. Yeah, I mean the brain, you know, is is certainly one of the most complex things in the you know in the universe. The complexity of the brain is just staggering. The number of neurons, the number of connections within the brain, and just the the complexity of how it's dynamically changing all the time in response to experience. So it's certainly true. Um, in many ways, that is precisely the capacity that practices like meditation are harnessing. It's the fact right. that the brain is dynamically changing all the time. It's not just fixed to operate in any one way. So Thankfully. you can kind of point, exactly. You can, you know, <laughs> and I'd be still an anxious mess if that was right. true, right? You I know, would you be right think. there with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's the hopeful thing. It's that we're not, it's not, we're not genetically or neurally hardwired to be any particular way. We actually can, can strengthen these capacities that we all have by training our minds. And I know at the the Center for Healthy Minds, you guys are you guys are doing some really cool things, uh, and you're focused on, as you said, this idea of well being. And I, you know, again, I think that's one of those those words or those sayings that we hear a lot. But what does well being really mean? Well, the the obvious thing to say is that well being is extremely complex. So you could say that well, be, you know, you can have financial health and well-being you can have physical health and well-being you can even talk about well-being in terms of relationships so the work we do focuses very specifically on mental well-being or psychological well-being uh, and even there it's complex and there's lots of influences on our mental and emotional state and whether or not we feel um, you know that we're at our best or we're really struggling um, but I think one way to look, maybe the first thing to say is that happiness and well-being are not the same thing. Happiness mm -hmm. is just about positive feelings. And that's part of well-being. Of course, we want to have positive emotions and feelings from time to time. But well-being can show up differently in different situations. If you're with a friend who is really having a hard time, the response, the appropriate response isn't happiness, right? It's to be empathetic. It's to be caring. And that's how well-being shows up in a circumstance like that. So we really think about well-being um, in terms of the qualities of mind that cut across a range of human experiences. And so we have, we've developed a scientific model based on decades of research that focuses on four main dimensions of well-being. These are what we call the four pillars of, uh, of a healthy mind or the four pillars of well-being. I'd love to hear what those four pillars are. So the shorthand for them uh, is awareness, connection, 
insight and purpose. So around our center, everybody says ACIP, A-C-I-P. So it's awareness, connection, insight, and purpose. And there's a lot to say about each of those, but the, each of these is really, um, when they're fully present, these are moments when we're resilient, when we feel like we're at our best, and when these maybe uh, dip and are not as strong, these are oftentimes when we are struggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's interesting, too, you brought up the word happy. And I threw out uh, to to my listeners that I was going to be chatting with you. And I asked if anybody had any questions. And I had the same question in various forms, but basically the same thing show up numerous times. And I thought, this would be interesting to throw out to you because I think we all, uh, particularly when we talk about emotions, we tend to think happy, sad, angry, maybe anxiety, but, or fear, but not, not a huge range of emotions, but happiness always comes up. And a lot of people asked, is it possible to be happier even if my situation never changes my career or my money or my relationship situation never changes? Like, can I actually be happier and can I use meditation to get to that point? I, I would say absolutely yes. I mean, at first I can answer, you know, just my personal experience, which, as I mentioned earlier, was part of what prompted me on on my own journey, which was that I, you know, when I was younger and first began uh, beginning to meditate, I really equated my uh, sense of happiness and well-being with my circumstances or even with my emotional state, I just kind of felt like, look, I'm an anxious person. I'm just, this is kind of how I am, who I am, and I'm going to be this way. And I don't know if I could be happy like this. I think what meditation did for me personally, and science is beginning to help us understand how how this actually works in the body and the, the brain, is that it it kind of helps us tap into a sense of contentment that isn't really circumstantial. Mm-hmm. Um, so even with with financially, you know, our kind of financial situation, actually a huge breakthrough in my own life was um, the beginning of a period that I spent living overseas. I spent almost a decade living uh, in Kathmandu, Nepal, in the foothills of the Himalayas. And I had, you know, I came from a background, I I grew up in Minneapolis in the Midwest, you know, the middle, middle class family. And there was a lot of, you know, in my world, my family, friends, et cetera, that was, it was pretty materialistic, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of unconsciously equated a lot of these things, you know, job and income and all this stuff with um, with my own sense of worth, kind of my own value yeah. as a person. And when I moved over there, um, there was a period of time where I was just living on a shoestring. I was literally sleeping in a sleeping bag on a foam mat on the floor, getting by on very little, uh, very little money. Outwardly. I had nothing. Outwardly, I had none of these markers of success and value, you know, in the modern world. And I was so happy. And it, that was so important for me because I realized that my own sense of uh, well being was not at all tied to all of these things that I had been brought up to believe that it was. That I could see that actually I, I was flourishing, I was, at, I was thriving, I was doing great. And yet I had none of these things. I had no money. I had no very few belongings with me. I was living this extremely simple lifestyle. And that was a a, a kind of a turning point for me. And I think what it allowed me to do is to shift the focus of my life and say, yeah, of course I need to make a living and need to get my basic needs met. But I didn't, I started to feel like I don't need all this stuff to, you know, to sort of um, define my life. And I could really focus on what really matters and hopefully just doing something will do some good in the world that will do some good in the world rather than just, you know, focusing everything on my career and making money. What an amazing perspective to have. So was it hard to kind of come back into this world? (laughs) And uh, like, were you able to to balance that? Like now that you had this revelation? You know, it's been challenging, but I think what it, I find most challenging is is less about the the more materialistic side of things because I don't uh, that that hasn't been quite such an issue. I think the pace of everything mm, is what yeah. what has been hard, even with the work I do and uh, you know the Center for Healthy Minds and 
you know, you'd think if, if anywhere was going to have a work-life balance and, you know, <laughs> a really sane pace of life, um, you, it would be, you know, with us and the work we do. But it's hard. It's it's not easy. The pace of the world is just so fast. It's hard not to get to get swept up in that. So that, I yeah. would say to this day, is is still a challenge, even trying to be very intentional, you know, about, you know, the work that I and that we do together and, and trying to do it in a balanced way. Yeah, no, I appreciate the honesty in sharing that. I think that definitely, it, when you when you say that it's still hard to balance those things, I think it just feels like, oh, okay, I can breathe now because I feel that too. And if you're a neuroscientist who does all this work on it and you still have trouble balancing it, like I can find some relief for myself. So <laughs> I, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, as we kind of wrap up, uh, if somebody is now even mildly interested in in meditating and starting to meditate what sort of you know apps or resources would you suggest that they start out with it, it it's really a golden age to be interested in things like this because it, it's so easy to to get a taste for different ways to meditate in this case um you know even 10 years ago it was a totally different ball game um, so I think there's a few different ways, you know, an obvious one is simply to, to poke around in the app store and, and find some of the different apps and to try them out. So there's a lot of really great meditation apps out there. You know, we, we ourselves developed the healthy minds app, which is completely free that has a range of different practices, not just mindfulness, but it, it has a different, a range of different practices built on this model of well being. I mentioned, so that's one one thing to check out where well, you can sample uh, kind of a variety of practices. But there's many other apps. You know, there's, of course, Calm and Headspace, which are two of like the, the most well-known apps. 10% Happier is a great app. Um, you know, there's a lot of really, really good apps. So that I always suggest, you know, just to try a few things. And there's no one right way, as you said earlier. It's yeah. really the right way is the one that works best for you. So just try a few things and see what really sparks your uh interest you know and there's other things too there's a million books out there um you know of just you know seeing uh poking around and finding some books or asking friends for recommendations is another good way so those are a few simple ways but it's 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 never been easier to get started well this has been amazing so many great insights I thank you so much for being here. I would love for you to tell everyone listening where they could go to connect with you and, and find out more for the Center of Healthy Minds. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. You can you can simply uh, Google uh, Healthy Minds Innovations, which is where you'll find more about the Healthy Minds program, the Healthy Minds program app that I just mentioned. Uh, and if you Google the Center for Healthy Minds, that's where you can learn a lot more about our research um, that we do at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So Healthy Minds Innovations is if you want uh, to get some of these practices and the Center for Healthy Minds if you want to geek out and learn about some of our scientific work. I could totally geek out over the science part of how we make money decisions or really any decision in life. But what I took away from this interview was that we have way more control over our mind and our impulses than we think. But the key is we have to train it just like a muscle and it doesn't just automatically do what we want it to do. And I think if you really sit and think about that and and how that influences your money and your money decisions, I mean, to me, it is completely mind blowing. So listen, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead right now, share it with a few friends that you feel really need to hear Court's advice. And as always, you can head to the show notes for all the links that Court mentioned, as well as links to our episode sponsors. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.